praise God, another great day in the kingdom of God. And I want to thank you for the opportunity again of uh, speaking into your life. And I'm so excited about this uh, new series of uh, teachings that we've been doing here on YouTube. And I appreciate you uh, uh, coming back and, and watching more of them. I, I also appreciate your uh, liking us and uh, subscribing to uh, the channel as well. Of course, by subscribing, you'll be notified every time a new one is posted. But uh, we've been on a series here for a number of months and uh, only a few of these are on the YouTube. Uh, the rest of the series is available on our ministry website at davemartinministries.com or livingsupernaturally.com. But uh, I, I do want to uh, let you know that today's session is gonna be a little different than uh, normal, whatever normal might be. But uh, we're seeing God just move in a very powerful way with an outpouring. And uh, one of the things that I see happening, as you hear me talk about on the show today, is a, a release of, of the gifts of God, or activating of the gifts of God. And one of our partners, Gail Norris, from uh, uh, up in Niagara Falls, uh, she came into our ministry about a year ago, and God is just so ministered to her through the ministry and uh, she's just come on fire and uh, her her gifting is uh, that of a composer but as you're going to see although this has been a natural gift of hers for many many years uh, in, over the last couple of months maybe four or five months God has begun downloading to her and she is getting two three four spiritual hymns I mean just absolutely incredible uh, full composition type stuff like a you know a Bach Beethoven kind of a symphony kind of a thing getting the whole composition and God's downloading it to her and uh, I say that to encourage you because whatever your gifts are God wants to do the same and he is doing the same for you so be open to that and uh, so anyway I invited Gail on to our, our call tonight and uh, she's literally going to uh, sing a spiritual hymn that literally God had just given to her uh, an hour or two before the program. So I'm, I'm sure to bless you, but uh, most importantly, I wanted to encourage you that whenever your gift is, God wants you to begin flowing in it more than ever before. Also, Chuck Whitson is going to be on the, on the segment tonight here, or very segment tonight. So uh, Gail's going to be up first, and uh, then uh, Chuck's going to come on. And uh, then I'll actually start my teaching segment somewhere about 35 minutes into the show. So if you want to fast forward to that, you can do that. And though uh, the word that Chuck has for us tonight, really encouraging word. I know it will bless you. Uh, actually, I had to cut him off a little bit short because uh, we were getting so far into the, into the program. But I do teach for a little over a half hour. And uh, we're going to be continuing in this series we've been on, on going to the next level, being believable and they're really focusing on my teaching tonight on uh, seeing into the realm of the spirit and uh, recognizing the natural world that you're seeing isn't real at all the real world is spirit and they're going to share just a really powerful testimony of how god supernaturally provided for me my house was in foreclosure and they were trying to repossess my car i mean i was in a terrible place 30 years ago as we were launching the ministry but it was then that God gave me the revelation of, of, of seeking him for wisdom and seeing the finished work of, of the promises of God. And anyway, that's tonight's lesson. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Thank you again for the privilege you're giving to us here to, to minister to you through this ministry. And uh, if you would, tell, tell your friends about it. We, we'd love to have other people find us and discover us here just as you have. Praise God. Enjoy. One thing I did want to make mention to you here as we are developing you know, this new uh, technology uh, is we're still learning and experiencing some of the growing pains of learning. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're actually doing a, a dual video. Uh, and uh, the video, the dual video didn't come out. Uh, operator error, that was the operator. So the video that we're using is what comes through the uh, the smart meeting app, the, the company that we're using. Unfortunately, they're using a, uh, a frame rate of 10 frames per second uh, to save space on their servers. 
and usually a video would be like 30 frames a second. So as a result, the video isn't uh, like in perfect sync with my lips. Or uh, So anyway, I, I trust you're going to enjoy the quality of the word more than anything. Amen. So enjoy. Well, welcome everybody. I want to thank you for um, enduring through some technology challenges with us. Uh, I'm quite confident uh, we're going to get uh, gooder at this, and I know that's not a good word, but uh, I know we're going to get gooder, and uh, it's going to get better in the process of getting gooder as we move forward here because God's a God of increase, and uh, I'm fully anticipating him to uh, show himself strong. And praise God, we've come a long way. I think we're about four weeks into this now, trying this new technology with screen and uh, uh, illustrating messages. Uh, as a point of reference now, we do have uh, four videos up on YouTube and uh, we're trying to uh, get them quickly but uh, with a, uh, a limited staff, we're, we're not as quick as we hope but right now everything is current with the videos including last week Thursday we had a, a real technological problem, and it was called operator error. <laughs> I was the operator that made the error. But uh, we thought to uh, uh, avoid confusion, we would set up a separate account for uh, doing extra meetings outside of our Tuesdays. And uh, what happened is the two accounts got confused, and we had some people on one and some on the other. And, and uh, I was on the wrong one, but amazingly, we had 35 other people that made the same mistake. So those of you that were on the right number, I applaud you, and I'm sorry that uh, you didn't um, get to participate in the meeting, but it was recorded. And uh, this is a video I want to encourage everyone to see because it is going to literally has the potential of, of touching the world and changing or transforming the world with the Word of God. We're introducing a, a segment of our prayer app that we kind of codenamed Gracebook, and uh, we're not going to use that name. We did buy the domain, but uh, to avoid any possible, uh, uh, what's the right word, uh, problems with uh, Facebook, but uh, you get the idea when we say Gracebook to what it might be, but I, I tell you what God's given to us far exceeds anything you can imagine in the a similarity to a name anyway. But uh, anyway, it has many, many pieces, probably uh, 15, 20 at least. And uh, we're, we're working on one of those pieces, which is really a, a, a focal point of the whole program, and that's prayer and demonstrating the power of prayer, particularly to... Uh, the, the marginal believer or even the unbeliever in, in showing people the, the truth the, the, of, of God's word and uh, it's, it's a concept we've proven with our discipleship program and uh, we're now uh, taking it to the next level and putting into a group uh, uh, format and uh, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about it because I, I, I just know where it's going to go. And we're looking for people to help us now over the next probably 90 days to test it and help us to uh, you know, just explore it and, and fine tune it. And then once we get it done in this mode, then we'll be able to give it to the programmers and, and to really develop it. So I really appreciate everyone, if you could, uh, check out the More Results in Prayer video. It's on YouTube. Did send an email. It's got a link to it. And if you're interested in being a tester, send me an email, call me or something, and let me know so that I can send out uh, a link to you as a survey. Uh, so we're going to be putting people together in kind of homogeneous groups. And uh, uh, so anyway, uh, let's, let's go to, <laughs> to the Lord in prayer. Woo! I think my tongue is tied here. That's always a sign of a... Uh, when I'm losing my voice or my ability to speak, it usually is because God is about to do something, and I feel like he's doing with the opposition that we had uh, today and even tonight, but the, and so many people having a hard time getting on. Let's just believe right now for a, a, a mighty a flow of anointing. I feel it here in the studio. In the studio is my office, but uh, I, I just feel such a presence of God. And Father God, I thank you for your presence that's here right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I just uh, purpose, I choose to release of this anointing to each one 
that is uh, hearing me now, Father, whether it's live or somewhere in the world listening live or somewhere in the world listening to the recording, Father, I, I know that the... Um, the power of your spirit is unlimited and literally it's um, being um, married of sort of the digital technology and being released every time it's played the Father. I just speak release of miracle healing power right now. I release it, Father, and I thank you, Father, for just a surge of power, your presence to fill each person's space, wherever they are right now, Father, I just thank you for uh, uh, an filling and the impartation, the quickening of your spirit, Lord, to just work within them head to toe in any sickness, disease, infirmity, anything, Father God, that is working against them, Father, we just break its hold and its power over them in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah, glory, Whew. Hallelujah. Well, Dave, I'm, I'm a, Dave Huck is my producer. And Dave, uh, I forgot we were going to start with uh, Gail Norris uh, gonna, is going to sing a song in the spirit for us. And uh, Dave, if you would let me know here on the chat wall, maybe here, if uh, you can identify her from Niagara Falls. And uh, we want to get her on the line. And uh, while, while David's finding Gail and unmuting her, let me uh, just encourage everyone that we're in a season. And we're going to bring Chuck up here in a few minutes as soon as Gail finishes. And uh, one of the things that as I've been praying this last week uh, about this year, where we're going, what we're doing, we're going to make some real serious uh, changes in some of what we're doing. We're going to uh, have more guests coming on. We're, going, we're changing as well uh, the, the first part of every uh, week. Uh, for the last number of months, we've had Chuck sharing words that he's been receiving. And I, I just felt like, as I've been praying about this, we, we need to take this up to a higher level. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is I've asked Chuck that... Um, because he, he does this anyway, he, he just scours the the new services and he follows at least a dozen different ministries uh, like Elijah List and so forth, ministries like that. And um, to just scour all of what's being said then each week, uh, giving us kind of a highlight of what the prophets are saying around the world. And I know he's he's been doing that now, and uh, the hard time he's going to have tonight is is uh, narrowing it down to about ten minutes because that's what that segment uh, is going to have for time. But uh, that's going to be kind of what we're going to be doing. Uh, and then if Chuck gets something real fresh, something I mean something just real spot on, as they would say in England, uh, then we'll we'll share that. But the other thing that's going to happen is we're going to be inviting some other prophetic voices on. And, uh, and as well as some other guests uh, for this Tuesday night uh, conference webinar. And I want to thank everybody. Uh, David, did you uh, find Gail there in the system what, to unmute her? her? There's not a name by any of the, many of the phone numbers. Uh, what's her last name? Uh, Norris. Norris. Let's see if I can. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe we'll go to Chuck first. And then you could uh, look quickly into the partner database and find her phone number as well there. I just found that. Are you found her? Okay. Can you? Okay. Okay. So, Gail, are you Hi. there? Yes. Oh, yay, technology and good people. <laughs> what, a, what an awesome thing, the way it works. Um, let me introduce you a little bit, Gail. You can maybe say a little bit more about yourself here in a minute. But I, uh, I met you about a year ago, Gail. Yeah. And I think you found me through Sid Roth, as I remember. Yeah, and you said it was a divine appointment because I just called you um, to order something from your ministry. That's right. But what I do remember is many months of uh, ministering with you over the phone. Yes. And then I know Chuck's group ministered with you as well. Mm -hmm. But what a day and night difference from when we first met. Praise Jesus. <laughs> 
Now, Gail, you have a a gift, I and mean, I, 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 I mean, you have a gift. I know you have a gift, but you have natural training in music. Yes. And you you were trained as like a composer. Tell me, tell us just yeah. real quickly what your background is. Well, I have a is. university degree in um, well piano performance, but um, I studied um, beginning and then advanced composition. And I would I literally uh, a couple of times slept behind the piano at the conservatory. Uh, while the security guard went through with the flashlight because I had to have something ready for the professor, and it was arduous. And um, something very wonderful and beautiful, is happening. Um, they're just coming out. And, and, and it started as a trickle, and now it's like um, this one just uh, came out a couple of hours ago. Okay, now, now before you go there, I want to pause you here a second. Yeah. Uh, as I know from previous conversations, uh, this that is happening right now is brand new. I mean, this has never happened to you before. No, no. Uh, and you're, you're growing exponentially, I know, spiritually, and it's been exciting to watch that over the last year's time. But everyone here that's listening, I want you to pay attention because what's happening here, and this is why I want I want, I want to do the segment here with Gail because God is releasing uh, anointing and uh, they're, they're those that have a gifting and that you all have some kind of a gifting uh, but the gifts are coming alive the, the natural propensity that God's given to you combined with the release of the anointing that's happening right now is going to take whatever God has given you over the course of time to a level beyond anything you can imagine. And this is exactly what's happening with Gail. Uh, with no effort on her own, the Holy Spirit is coming upon her and causing this gift to work beyond anything she's ever seen before. Now, Gail, how, uh, how, how, how often does this happen that you have this spontaneity of, of uh, supernatural composition happening? Well, it started one night, and I was just praying in the spirit. I had the light out, and I saw this vision of a magnificent lion's head. And I heard in my spirit, grab a notebook and pen. And it, but it wasn't very frequent. And then over a how, period of time. Now, time, how, how far back are we talking about? Um, maybe that was about a um, couple of years ago. Okay. Um, and then it's just been like um, it comes out like almost faster than I can write it down. Now that's present tense, though, because I mean, from, yes, from, from the conversation tense. we've had, I mean, in the last month or two, it's just reached a new level. As I yeah, understand, yeah, it's coming out like faster than I can write it down. And some of the melodies are so beautiful. And um, today, this one that came, I was just. Um, with the Lord and I was just crying and crying and crying and just kind of gratitude and worship and um, this this uh, came um, a, a lot of them um, are Bible verses that come out um, to music um, um, it's to me it's it's you know there, there, I have no words because I do not have this kind of ability and I'm, I have no instrument. I have no manuscript paper. I'm writing words on my notebook with letter names instead of musical notes. Wow. And that's all new for you, too. Yeah. I mean, to write like this. Oh, yeah. But if this is where we are, church. We're in a season, and I, my feeling is that it happened, and probably started happening in the fall with the start of Jubilee. But what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing from other prophets, and we might get a little insight on this from Chuck tonight, but what the prophets are saying is God is activating gifts, and, and particularly in the creative area, artists are, are, are being used in ways beyond imagine. But every gift, every, everything God's given to you uh, in any kind of a propensity of, of, of ministry or, or, or whatever you do, um, in, in your vocation, you're going to expect to see God take it to a new level. So, all righty. So, Gail, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Anything else you want to say before you sing? Yeah, I'll just say that um, I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm not leaning on anything of myself because 
the other ones I've had time once they've come out to go over them, you know, like to read them. And this I haven't had time. So this I'm, just came an hour or so ago. Yeah, two almost two hours. So I haven't had time to go over it. So I'm. This is what the Lord wants me to sing today. I wanted to sing something else, but I'm obedient. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus, nothing can separate me from your love. I worship you. Jesus, nothing can separate me from your love. I worship you. 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 You are my life. I worship you. what the Bible calls in Ephesians 4 where it says be filled with the Spirit singing unto yourselves with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. That is what uh, would be uh, defined as a spiritual hymn. So um, that was uh, awesome, Gail. Thank you. Thank you. How many, uh, how many of these do you have now? I have Maybe 40. I don't know. I've got to wow. get them organized. Well, everybody, you can agree to uh, pray uh, for the uh, the wisdom. And we're talking about wisdom tonight, but uh, for Gail to have the wisdom of God in, in what to do with what God's given to her. And uh, one of the things I know, or I really believe to be true, I'm not saying I know, that's probably a better word, is that we're in a season of a wealth transfer. And it would be just like God to give something like this that's going to glorify him, but also provide a tremendous amount of wealth uh, for the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God, and to bless Gail at the same time. So, Gail, we're in agreement that you got the mind of Christ, and God's going to show you exactly what to do and how to do it. Amen? Amen. All righty. Okay, so Gail, we're going to turn your mic off now, and we're going to look for uh, Mr. Witzel. 
And uh, what I need to do here is uh, get my Skype account going real quickly here. And while I'm doing this here, let me just say again, welcome to everybody that's joined in. And uh, we're following a little different format tonight. And uh, I trust you're all blessed by what we're doing. Okay, let me bring Mr. Witz over here into the picture. I'm here. You are here. Welcome, sir. Uh, so, um, so Chuck, Chuck um, per our discussion here, you've been scouring a whole bunch of different prophetic words. So you have a collection of uh, something here that's going to uh, encourage, motivate, and speak to people's lives, I, I presume. Give, give us a little idea of what what your what this David, looks like in the background. David, I'm sorry to interrupt. Nobody can hear Chuck right now. All right. Well, tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna just start the segment over for the recording, Chuck. Okay. Everyone, I appreciate everyone out there um, hanging in there with us and going through these growing pains of technology. <laughs> uh, the uh, the good news in all of this is we're we're ahead of the curve. I mean, what we're doing here, uh, Microsoft is experimenting with it. Uh, uh, other companies, um, we we have uh, some pretty high tech to technology that we subscribe to with uh, Microsoft, and uh, they have a going a, a meeting like this, but uh, they haven't perfected it enough yet to release it. So start meeting is ahead of the curve. So we're working ahead of. Uh, the curve here in what we're we're doing here, mixing the phone with the computer and then the video. Uh, so it's going to probably take a little bit uh, on everyone's part here. So uh, we appreciate that. So okay, well Chuck, I'm going to start over here and just introducing you. Uh, we have Chuck <coughs> Witzel here with us now, and uh, Chuck's been uh, scouring uh, lots of different places. Um, um, Chuck, and I know you're, you 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 gave us a little bit of a recap. Like you to do that again because of the audio challenge we had there. But uh, tell us where this information is coming from. That I mean, where you say they're saying this, they're saying that. Is this from emails, prophetic newsletters? Uh, wh where's this information coming from? I, I know it's incredibly encouraging, and what's so exciting to me is more than any other time that I've been been noticing is the the uh, the similarities and the words and uh, agreeing with me too about uh, kind of the best of times and the worst of times but yet uh, just a real move of the spirit so tell me where you're pulling the information you're getting here that you're about to share with us well a lot of it comes from particular websites that I that I subscribe to you know and also the Elijah list and there's numerous different organizations out there there's hundreds and hundreds of them and uh, the, what I normally do is look for people that have been around for a long time that have been a proven track record they're accepted in the community as as uh, being uh, you know true prophets and those are the ones that I go to to uh, to listen to there's a lot of them out there but those are the ones I go to for uh, because they've been around and they're they're proven, and I think we need to be very right. careful at this hour. That's what I was really, and that's you know that's what I was hoping you were going to say without you know having you to tell you what to say. But I wanted to hear it coming from you that you know because there are so many prophetic voices that you're you're pulling from well known established people so like Cindy Jacobs as an example, and Doug Addison and Jerry Enro and. Yes, that's very true. It's, there's a lot of people that I listen to, but I wouldn't ever, uh, you know, pass it on until I'm uh, convicted uh, that that it is the Lord. But I stick with the, especially for what we're doing tonight, and uh, I stick with those that most everybody even knows. All right. Well, let's hear what you what you've uh, put together for from all of them. Well, what I what, what I was going through this today, and then especially when uh, uh, when Gail came on, and and she's just very typical of what I'm hearing from the prophets around the world. God is doing something new and exciting, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, He's not just reaching out to those with degrees and this and degrees and that. He's looking for anybody with a heart 
and, and that we'll take the time to spend with him and he'll just reveal stuff to us like he has Gail. And that's one of the things I'm hearing right now. He is just reaching out to anybody that, that's got a heart for him. And uh, uh, it's going to be exciting, but there's some of the things we, uh, the themes I'm hearing, and you mentioned one of them, is the release of finance is going to, it's going to require, require a lot of money to find this 2 billion people coming into the kingdom, according to Bob Jones, and miracles. And one of the other themes we see a lot is God is really going to touch the young people. Uh, in, I mean, the throwaways, the ones that, uh, that you know, don't necessarily fit into society properly. Uh, and radical revelations in, uh, in all kinds of, of the seven mountains. So uh, that's, it, it just, that's kind of some themes that I've been looking at. I wanted to uh, read something by Johnny Inlow, which most people that have been around a while may know him. Uh, I think he's an awesome, proven person. But he had a great uh, word here, and it talks about a vision of a 50-foot blue wave invasion of Lord and angels. A couple nights ago, while at worship at Higher Vision Church here in Valencia, California, I had an amazing vision. I saw an immense blue wave coming in and instantly heard that it was a 50-foot wave. I then saw a yellow figure that was surfing and coming in on that wave. I knew instantly that it was the Lord. As I looked at his face, I saw eyes of burning fire. I knew the fire in his eyes was love. The Lord was coming with, within the coming wave, but I was then able to see the crest of the wave itself. Myriads and myriads of angels were coming in on the wave. I then saw the wave crash onto Los Angeles, and I knew everything was about to change with this invasion as the blue water crashed in and seemed to go everywhere. Uh, and then... Uh, then he had an interpretation. I share a little bit of it, but one of the things he said: the most anointed songs in history are about to come out in this next season. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yes, and then of course in Los Angeles on the April 9th at the Coliseum, Lou Engle has sold his house to rent the Coliseum in Los Angeles, and it holds 110,000 people, and he's called it the Souza now. And I believe that that is absolutely going to be one of the turning points in America, based on the West Coast, maybe all over America. So there's some exciting things going on there. Uh, uh, but, but what we're seeing is this wave coming in of God. And all we have to do is receive it. Also, there's another fellow that I like a lot is Doug Addison. And Doug has, uh, has some wonderful predictions here, and I think everybody be blessed. Uh, I'll read one of them here. The, it was his first quarter of 2016 forecast. January will be a continued time of deep pruning as God prepares us to operate at higher levels for what is coming. What we did in the past seasons, we will not be able to do in the new year. God is revealing and healing things at a deeper level. Now, this month, February, will be a time of old things dying, but the result will bring new life. Two major prophets, Bob Jones and John Paul Jackson, went to heaven in February 2014 and 2015. And we can expect to reap a greater level of revelation in the month of February because of this. Then March is a breakthrough month. We will see a sudden acceleration of favor and sudden advancements. Expect to see lots of movement as God is realigning you to operate at new levels. The saying March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb is going to be reversed. We're going to go out like a lion. We will see the start of new things. That, that might, they might look small, but the results will be a greater impact. Uh, and then uh, another one that he, uh, he had shared on, in this, on, on uh, this email, he said, A week before my Christmas encounter, I heard a distant rumble in the spirit. It was the Lord coming. The glory of the Lord is returning like never before. Mm. It is not coming in the current church structure, though churches are invited. It will not fit in the old wineskins because it will blow many churches up by causing division. It is because of God's love and mercy for the current church that he will not allow this movement to be damaged. We will still have the old church structure, and this move of God will be like what happened during the 1950s healing revival. The move of God took place mostly outside the churches in tents. 
I'm not saying that this move of God will be in tent meetings, but in similar fashion, it will happen outside and not inside. Then the Lord's been telling me that for 10, 15 years. Uh, matter of fact, all almost all revivals start outside of the existing church system. And here's one that, that the Lord spoke to me about for a long time, too. The outcasts are God's priority. Last year on New Year's Eve, I had a very powerful encounter in which I literally heard the audible cries of people who have been wounded by uncaring Christians and leaders. Then I heard this part was not audible. The Lord said, their blood has reached my ears and I must respond. In 2016, God's new agenda is about those who have been wounded by Christianity. These are spiritual outcasts who do not fit into typical churches. Many of them have been pushed away and deeper into darkness by the very ones who hold the keys to God's light and love. And uh, so I, I, I've been praying about this for a long time because I know it's coming. I've seen pictures and my spirit and everything about it. That's really, really an exciting thing to me. Uh, this is why we need a lot of money because a lot of people coming to the kingdom will not have any finances uh, to be able to pay for. And this is kind of interesting here because he was talking about why 2016 could be a start of something new. There has been a move of God every 11 years dating back to a Susan Street revival in 1906. The 11-year intervals fall on the 1950 healing movement, the 1961 charismatic renewal, the 1972 people movement, and in 1983, the third wave charismatic renewal. Karen and I was in that one. The 1994 had the Toronto blessing, and 11 years later, there would have been a movement but that, that actually did start around 2005, but this amazing movement from God never got off the ground because of judgments. It was cut short, judged, and bound by those with keys of authority. The 2005 move started with unusual signs of God's glory, such as gold fillings appearing in people's mouth, gold dust, gemstones appearing supernaturally. But the move never went global as God intended, and it was very limited. It is now 11 years after 2005, which is 2016. There is a move of God coming this year, and it will be with fire and oil from heaven that cannot be touched by those who have not been prepared. This is what I saw in my Christmas morning encounter. Uh, and then one of the things that we know is, is going to be happening here is is the financial release and uh this new movement of god is coming to is going to cost a lot of money to fund because it is going to be targeted to the foreign spirit and the outcast basically young people and those who do not have much money it will cost a lot of money so god is releasing financial strategies right now god is calling us to something new but we're holding things back by doing things according to tradition as opposed to doing what the father is doing Jesus said, I will I only do what I see the Father doing, but many people are only doing what they see their spiritual fathers and forefathers doing. This does not allow us to branch into new things that God opens them up. An example from Genesis 26 is when Isaac was going to Egypt during the famine like his father did, but God spoke to him to go into the land of Philistines instead, where the result was he got blessed 100-fold in the time of famine. Mm -hmm. Many people are stalled because they... Hey, Jack, Jack, I'm going to pause you. We're over time. Okay. So, I mean, I know it's a good word. We, matter of fact, we sent that word out to all of our partners. So if you're not on my email list, uh, but, I mean, we're in that season. I mean, 100%, 100-fold return, right? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, just real quickly, Chuck, uh, commenting on that, something you mentioned there. Uh, about 2005, but some of you might remember in 2005 is when we had a 17-week revival that started in Milford, Connecticut, and uh, went 17 weeks in Connecticut starting in January of 2005, and uh, it went for 17 weeks, um, and then moved from there. Uh, two weeks later, I took a, uh, a couple weeks off, went to Madison, I mean, um, Wisconsin, Milton, Wisconsin. I don't think you were part of that. Were you there in Milton, yes, Chuck? Yes, I was there. Yeah. So we went to Milton, and literally I was there for a Sunday, and we ended up being there every day for eight weeks. And then the whole revival moved down to Rockford, Illinois, 
And in Rockford, Illinois, is where we're still going now. We go there every month, half or all these years. But uh, literally, I saw God do something in Rockford, never ever saw before. But literally, the city shared me. And I was in the largest Assembly of God church on Friday night, the largest uh, faith church on, on Saturday night, and another church on, on Sunday. It was, and that went for many months. But just like the, it said there, it kind of like fizzled out. It's yes. like uh, God was wanting to do something. But uh, it was actually in the revival thing. It was unfortunately in church leaders that got jealous because of things were happening. Anyway, it's not gonna, it's not going to get messed up this time, I believe. No, it is not. One other thing I wanted to comment on, and I wanted to get into some teaching here tonight, but uh, uh, this Azusa Street happening in uh, uh, April 9th. I got an email a couple of days ago from uh, a lady, uh, a friend of the ministry. She's actually been on the program here with me, Joyce Ruan, and um, she uh, interprets dreams. But she, uh, a number of years ago, rented a a large stadium in um, Boston, I think it was Boston, uh, to gather people for a night of worship. Well, anyway, she is the East Coast coordinator out of Washington, D.C., and uh, we're going to have her on as a guest here sometime in the next few weeks. And uh, she is, uh, again, she's, she's coordinating um, an East Coast, uh, I, think, I think they're going to get Baltimore Stadium, I'm not sure, but uh, they're going to be doing the same thing on the East Coast simultaneous to the West Coast. Uh, April 9th uh, event and uh, I, the, the focal point I know is that they're going to have a, a day of prayer at the Washington Monument for uh, Christian leaders uh, so that's kind of the focal point so anyway we are heading into something unlike anything the world has ever seen and we get to be right on the front edge of it hallelujah Chuck thank you you're welcome and uh, appreciate your your labor of love there, and uh, we're going to keep moving here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take you off of the screen here, sir, and uh, we'll look forward to. Hey, I'm going to see you in Rockford this week. Yes. Yeah, Thursday night this week we'll be in Rockford, and then Friday and Saturday Milwaukee, and uh, then on Sunday morning I'll be in Algonquin, Illinois, at the well. And then uh, Sunday night in Monmouth, Illinois. So uh, then next week we leave for uh, Switzerland and then uh, Germany. So Chuck, I look forward to seeing you Thursday and then back here next Tuesday. Yes. And thank you again for sharing. My pleasure. All righty. Sorry to have to cut Chuck off there a little bit. That word is such a good word, but we just got to keep moving here on our time frame. We want to pick up where we left off here last week. As we've been looking in James chapter 1, uh, we've been talking about how God sees problems differently than we see them. <laughs> Flying me around the screen here. But uh, we've been looking at this here from James 1. Oh, I see what we did here. Let's uh, try this again here. We want to go over here to James. And we've been looking at going to the next level in the supernatural. And uh, what God has showed me here, going back uh, 12 weeks ago, actually, I didn't realize it was that long ago. But as much as we need to uh, pay attention here, David, and change one, one. Okay. So, but as much as we want to um, focus on spiritual things relative to the gifts of the Spirit and the operation of the gifts of the Spirit and you know the operation of, of the infilling and, and so forth, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What God showed me is that we really need to spend some time working on the nature and the character of, of the Christian. And uh, it's what we call, the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. So last week we we start, well, we've been actually in this James scripture here for a number of weeks, but uh, last week we we gave the example of a pipe and how a pipe that's being prepared for use into the ocean it uh, it goes through a, a very uh, difficult time in terms of uh, testing and uh, they 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 pressurize it they look for leaks leaks are going to be found water squirts out of the leaks and then what happens is they repressurize it and then they, they weld wherever the leak is it's if you were a pipe it would be a very very painful process but the the same thing is true for you and I 
the the trials of life uh, are are painful and they're hard, and we have to know God doesn't put problems in our life per se. Uh, the devil does. God is the giver of good things, but in the infinite wisdom of God, God uses bad for good. He always will turn the tables on the devil. Problems don't take him by surprise. A few weeks ago, we looked at the scripture in Mark. And uh, in Mark 4, um, we, we see um, Jesus gives the, the, the instruction to the disciples. I'm bringing me up here a little bit. He, he told the disciples to get in the ship and go to the other side. Well, what happened is they got into the middle, of course, and they were fearing for their lives because of the, of the fierceness of the storm. Now, right before that, that he said, get in the boat and go to the other side, it says, with many such parables taught he the word as they were able to hear it. Well, how does faith come? It comes by hearing the word, hearing and hearing and hearing. Well, what happened is when they woke up Jesus frantically because they were fearing for their lives, what did Jesus do? He rebuked the wind, he rebuked the waves, and then he rebuked the disciples. And he said to them, how is it you have no faith? And what happened? They doubted his word. They, they doubted that promise, you're going to make it. Go to the other side. And I'm telling you, it really makes no difference what the middle looks like. You got the promise of God's word. You're going to make it. The Bible says the righteous are never forsaken. Their seed are never seen begging bread. You, we have to learn to trust God, trust his word in those promises that we hide in our heart. And we know that God's not a man that he would lie. So we hold on to the promise, and literally what happens is the Word works mightily in us, and it provides the, 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 uh, the ability for us supernaturally, whether it's a divine encounter of an angel or someone coming along and, and, and providing exactly what we might need. or you know, God just works, orchestrates things to accomplish His good will. We see the disciples, you know, in that test of the will in Mark chapter 4, um, where Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, that they failed that test. But as we've been looking at how God takes us from one level to the next level, and we want to go to higher levels, he won't put you on a higher level until you have passed the last level. So we have to recognize that you know the trying of our faith is is like the the uh, grinder on the on the pipe that's being prepared for deep sea usage, that it it has to go through the grinding process, it has to go through the the welding process. But where where it gets grind ground and the, where it gets welded, it'll never leak again. And the same thing for you and I, when we pass a test that the devil put in our life, a trial, that when we see the deliverance of God, you will never doubt God on that area again because you, you've learned he, he's faithful and he will always provide for you. He'll always make a way. You know, just like Moses. Wow, what a great encounter for him when he came to the Red Sea and there was nowhere to go. But by faith, he took a step of faith and, and did what God said and God supernaturally opened up the Red Sea, made a way. And like it says in Psalm 60 and Psalm 108, vain is the help of man, but through God we shall do valiantly and heed is that will tread down our, our enemy. Well, that's exactly what happened. And that's there with Moses and up making a way where there was no way, opening a door, making a door, because he can do that for you. Then he swallowed up the enemy. But what God wants you to know tonight is you need to look to God and not to man. Now, this is something that I've had to learn, and I continue to have to relearn it sometimes as, the, as we get higher levels, and, and new levels of devils are coming against us, and, but we have to learn to trust God. But I, I, you know, once you learn to trust God in one area, I'm, I'm telling you, you learn by experience. My, my dean of Bible school said to me, David said, school of experience is a great teacher, but the tuition is pretty high. And that's where I lost $100,000 because I disobeyed God by not following through a, a prompting that he gave me in my heart about a business deal. Just as we were launching the ministry some 30 years ago, uh, what happened is uh, the, the person that was buying the business uh, got involved with a company that was a scam. Now, no one knew it. And matter of fact, the company itself, which was called Citywide Finance in Dallas, they had... Uh, whole bunch of other people that they already financed them. What they were doing is giving people a million dollars or the promise of a million dollars 
all they had to do is come up with a $25,000 and the million dollars would be paid out literally over the course of time. But literally all they had to do is come up with $25,000 of escrow money and then they would get this loan for a million dollars that would be paid out over the course of numbers of years. But in any event, uh, this company, Citywide Finance, financed a whole bunch of deals that they lost money on. But once they had established a track record that they were doing this, then they scanned many, many people, and the man buying our business was one of them. So he put together a package of buying, um, I think, three or four different businesses. We were one. I was advertising our business for 100000 but he offered me 200000 to go into his package. He said, it'll, it'll take five years to get the money complete for 200000 but you will get a check every month. Um, and uh, so anyway, I had this witness in my heart, don't do it. But uh, I didn't obey. But I did do my due diligence. I had my Christian CPA, had my Christian attorney, uh, had my Christian banker. Everybody checked out all of the, the legalities and the opportunity and the, and the company that was behind it. Uh, and everything checked out because it was a well-thought-out scheme that no one could see except God, the heart of the man behind it that it was a scheme. So in any event, uh, it took about six months or eight months for it to hit the, the, you know, reality. And uh, so in that process, we were launching the ministry and I was uh, um, well, waiting on my um, $200,000, which I, I was going to get for five years, but I was going to start getting something like uh, $10,000 a month. And uh, what happened is the, the uh, first month payment didn't happen, and then the second month, and then the third month, and long story short, my house went into foreclosure, they were trying to repossess my car, I mean, and it was a horrible, horrible circumstance that I found myself in, and I was in the pit that we've been looking at here, and while I was in the pit, I mean, everywhere I look, and problems never come one at a time, they always bring their bodies. So when you're in a financial problem, what happens is because of the pressure, you usually will cause family issues and the relationship issues because of the financial pressures. Now, my wife's a wonderful woman, but when, when your house is threatened and we went to court, they were about to lose their house. And literally, I, I came to a place of I had uh, uh, six weeks, as I remember, maybe eight weeks of time, and if I didn't come up with uh, X number of thousands, like four or five thousand dollars, but if I didn't come up with that in exactly six or eight weeks, I'm pretty sure it was six weeks as I'm thinking about it, our house was gone. So when you put that kind of pressure on a marriage, it's, it's tough. And I'm, I'm believing God and I'm doing the ministry and I had a, because of my business background, I had the ability to make a lot of money in the natural world, but I put all that aside to do the work of the ministry and everyone is saying, Dave, you need to go back to work. And, you know, I had the witness in my heart to trust God and continue forging forward with the ministry. But, you know, so problems, they escalate. And so, you know, here I'm dealing with a financial problem, and then we have the relationship issues. And, and then you have uh, health issues because, you know, you're not sleeping as good, and now you're, you know, you you got things, lots of things going on. And I don't have a lot of time here to build on this, but I'm bringing into a point here that God took me here to this scripture, and I just want to check my time, see what we're doing on time here, I guess we've got about 10, 15 minutes yet. So what happened was, uh, I'm in the pit. Now, there's something about being in the pit. Everywhere you look, all you can see is pit. Now, what we, what we want to recognize is that the only way out of the pit is looking up, and the, and the looking up is where the light's going to come from. And the Bible says the entrance of thy word is light. So as I'm in this problem, uh, a unique set of circumstances happened. First off, I was uh, ministering to a young man in the church we had helped to start at the same time. We're, a couple of years prior to launching the ministry, we helped to start this church. And uh, this man was in a terrible financial place, and I'm, I'm witnessing to him, I'm ministering the word to him, and um, telling him everything that he needed to do to get out of his financial problem and his marriage problems and all that, uh, uh, the mess that he was in. And as I'm speaking to him, the word of God, he, I mean, that he, the devil, is like sitting on my shoulder and mocking me. And 
he said, why would you tell him these things? It's not working for you. I mean, here your, your marriage is being challenged. You're about to lose your house or your car, everything you have, and you're telling him to trust God. It, it doesn't work. Don't lie to this man. That was the haunting voice coming into my ear. We've talked about that, how the devil has the ability to exercise your mind like that. And it was just I was having this battle. I'm, I'm trying to minister to the man, but at the same time I have these haunting words coming to my mind. And then, um, you know, I, I'm telling this man, this is a pivotal point, I'm telling this man that what he needed to do is rebuke the devil, rebuke him, and, and, and to resist him. And the Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee. Well, as I'm telling him that, again, the haunting, laughing voice is now right. Resist me. It ain't working. I'm not leaving. And, and, and the reality of the deal was I was doing that. I was rebuking the devil. I was resisting the devil. But what was happening is it was this, as I was speaking to my mountain, the mountain kept getting bigger. And then if that wasn't bad enough, it was like the mountain started coming after me. And it, it was going from bad to worse. And you know, I'm trying to help somebody, and anyway, that's, that was the scenario. But what happened next was life-changing for me. And um, we'll pick up on this next week, and I'm going to tell you about the miracle that happened in how God did what God did with providing exactly what was needed so supernaturally. But what, the first thing that happened is, as I'm in this, I'm having this taunting voice come to my head, God spoke to me. And God spoke to my heart, and he said to me, the reason the devil is not fleeing, matter of fact, in the, in the scripture where it says resist the devil and he will flee, that word flee means to run in terror. And God said the reason he is not running, the reason he is not fleeing in terror is you are not believable. <laughs> he says, what do you mean I'm not believable? And he said, you don't believe the word. You, you, you don't have that confidence in your heart to what you're saying. And when you're commanding him to be gone, to be removed, you do not have, that's what God's speaking to me, you don't have the reality of confidence in your heart in my word. Whoa. And then God showed me a vision. And this vision was so incredibly life-changing. And I'm trusting it's going to be life-changing for you, too. What God showed me is uh, a young family, and this all happened, this is a quick vision, but God showed me a picture of a young family. And uh, I didn't see the husband, the father, but I saw the mother getting a, a phone call. And when the lady answered the phone, on the other end was a, a voice that said, I've been hired to kill you. I've been hired to make uh, life miserable for you and uh, to take you out, take your husband out, take your children out, and the more painful I can make it, the more money I'll get paid. Click, went the phone. And the, 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 the young mother says, oh, wow, that's a pretty bad prank. And she wrote it off as a prank, but it kept haunting her mind. Those, those thoughts were in her mind. And then what happened is it got worse because this telephone call came again and then it came again and it came again and it caused her to enter into a place of fear and literally uh, her and her husband together they they you know they got some counsel on it and, and and stuff like that I mean all this happened in a flash of a second the vision but I can see what happened is they did what they could do in the natural to protect themselves they put a security system in. They put fences up around the house so that when the young children, which are probably like one in three or something like that, very young children, but, but the, the, there was some protection. What happened, though, is they lost their joy. They lost their peace. They lost their, 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 their life. They became a prisoner and were f fearful all the time of what might happen. Well, this went on for some time, but the... the the next time that what I saw in the vision is when this person made this threatening phone call, her eyes were opened. And this is what God wants to happen for you tonight. 
for your eyes to be open to the truth of God's word because God's word is absolute truth. We can trust God's word. We can know that God's not a man that he will lie. He will always come through. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The righteous are never forsaken. That is his word to you. You are an overcomer. You are a champion. You're the head. You're not the tail. You're above. You're not beneath. Amen. The trials are going to come. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers you out of them all. We need to know this. We need to know that but although the trials come, if we put our confidence and trust in God, God will deliver, God will provide, God will protect, God will make a way where there is no way. He did for me. And I'm going to share that next week and on the supernatural uh, process that God brought to, to bring forth a supernatural deliverance literally within days of our house going into foreclosure we had the full amount of money I'll tell you that story next week but now what happened is this lady's eyes were opened and her eyes were opened what happened she saw the truth what did she see she saw a young boy uh, that she knew like a 15 year old boy lived on her block and we call him Billy Badmouth Billy lived on the end of the street, and what he was doing is exactly what she thought from the beginning, a prank phone call. But she didn't know that. And what happened is Billy got his kicks out of doing this, but what happened now when he called this time, and she sees him, her eyes are opened. Now, her eyes were open just like when, remember, remember when Elijah was on top of the mountain and his armor bearer went out and uh, went to get him something and he saw the, the, uh, uh, the, the army of the, I think it was the Philistines and, and historians tell us we're talking about upwards of uh, 60 to 100,000 in the Philistine army at that time and then the Bible says the whole Philistine army came against Elijah. And here comes the man of God, uh, the servant of the man of God. He sees this, this multitude of, of soldiers, and he comes to Elijah and says, hey, we have a problem. And, what, and Elijah says, well, what is it? And he said, you know, the Philistine army, we're surrounded. And what did Elijah say? Don't worry about it. There's more of us than be of them. And I'm sure this man was thinking, man, you've been in your prayer closet too long. I'm, I've been out there. I, I see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1,000, 1, Two, you have been in your prayer closet too long. But see, e Elijah knew. He knew his God, just like you and I. We, we know our God, and we know that he is more than able, and we know that there's more with us than be with them. And when this man's eyes were opened, he saw the reality of the God you and I serve. He saw the angel armies. He saw those that are even with you today and me today that are getting ready to bring about this wealth transfer, getting ready to bring forth the greatest revival the world has ever seen. If your eyes could be seen, be open right now to the realm of the Spirit, you would be in awe to the angels that are even in your room right now and to the hands of God and the ability of God. Now, you know, our eyes may never see this, but what we do see is God's Word, and we can see through real the reality of God and, and have a confidence in Him because we can see his word. We know his word. And again, he's not a man that he would lie. So we can see into the spirit, if you will, through the word, because the word is spirit. Now, when this young man, Billy Badmouth, he shoots off his next threat, this lady's eyes are up and she sees what's going on. And when she sees that her joy, her peace, their life savings, their life was lost, to a threat that had no substance, she got angry. I mean, in, in this vision, she got angry, and literally what happened is she blasted this kid. She said, Billy, I know who you are, and Billy, what you're doing is illegal, and Billy, I, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to make sure your parents pay for what harm and, and suffering you've caused this family and the loss that you've caused this family. Billy, your parents are going to pay a lot of money to, to take care of all this damage. And Billy, I'm going to make sure that you end up for many, many years in jail. She, she wasn't even done her rant because she knew the truth. Billy was out the door fleeing fearfully 
not knowing what was going to happen next, and certainly he knew the hammer had just come down on him. Well, this is the reality. The Bible says in Isaiah 14, where it talks about the devil, and we don't have time to go there now, but there it says when we get to heaven, we're going to see him for who he really is, and we're going to say, this is that that deceived the whole world. This is that which did all of this, all these problems. Church, I'm telling you, the devil is nothing compared to you. Compared to Christ in you, I should say. I mean, you, me, we're nothing. We're, we are, you know, you know, we can never stand up to the powers of darkness. But because you got Christ in you, you got the Almighty God, a God that is exceedingly above and beyond anything we could ask, think, or imagine with ability and power. And He has given you and me all authority and power to use His name. We have the ability to speak to the powers, to speak to the principalities, to speak to the sickness, to speak to whatever is coming against you. You have been given that authority. And when you come to recognize the reality, when your eyes are open to who you really are, you're going to say, this is that that did all this stealing. This is that that caused all of this sickness. And in the name of Jesus, there's going to be a righteous indignation that's going to rise up on the inside of you. And you're going to speak with a, a level of, of, of authority and confidence. And this is what happened to me. Exactly. When I got this vision, and man, I'm telling you, I had a whole different perspective. And I began to speak differently. I began to think differently. I began to approach life with the confidence of knowing who I was in Christ Jesus. And that's when everything turned around. That's when I pursued then the truth of God's word. And where it says here in, in, in the scripture here, let me just read it to you here. Oops, went too far here. James, a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Now we've looked at those words, literally, heagami he kera. That means to look at this thing from God's perspective and recognize that the devil is going to try to steal your joy because that's where your strength is. That's why God says, count it all joy. It means to celebrate. It means to put on that which is going to make a difference. You smile. You grin. You laugh. You, you purpose in your heart to approach the conflict with a... With a, with a uh, understanding of who you are and God is giving you the authority and the power to turn this circumstance around by his word in his name through his blood and you're going to see everything the devil did for bad God's going to turn it around for good because you love God and you're called according to his purpose okay so when you get a hold of this you're going to begin to smile at the problems you're going to begin to laugh at the tactics of the enemy because you know that you know that what he meant for bad God's going to turn it around for good. You can laugh at it. You can celebrate. Instead of a pity party, we have a joy party. And this is exactly what, what James is telling us here. Count it all joy when you fall into, literally encounter here in New American Standard, fall into in the, uh, in the King James over here on the right. But uh, literally in the, uh, in the Greek is peripipto, and it means to fall headfirst into a pit. You're at the bottom, nowhere to turn, nowhere to go, no way of escape. Everywhere you look, all you see is pit. When you're in that place, what does God say? Smile, get excited, have a party. Why? Because your redemption draws nigh. And God's going to deliver you out of the miry clay like he did David in Psalm 40. He's going to deliver you out of the miry clay. He's going to take you out of the pit. He's going to put your feet on a rock, put a new song in your mouth. Woo! And everyone's going to see. Wow. The anointing. Just receive this anointing that's here right now. Because there is a release of anointing to, to cause your eyes to be opened and to cause you to see Whew. the reality of who you are in Christ. That no weapon formed against you can prosper. You're on the winning team. It doesn't matter what the middle looks like. We're going to make it to the other side, and we're going to come out of this thing stronger, healthier, and more prosperous, and everyone's going to see and know our God reigns for his glory. Amen. Well, it goes on to say this. Knowing this, the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result 
so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without doubting. For one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. We're going to dig into this more next week. But literally, what God showed me is when I was in the pit, when I was in this financial nightmare, and circumstances and home, and, and every, everywhere I looked, I had more problems stacking up. God said, seek me for wisdom. And we're going to get into that next week, and we're going to look at that. What does it look like? How does it work? And you know, how's it going to play out? And played out for me, God will it'll play out for you, because when you put your confidence in God's word, God's word works. Amen. Well, praise God. I've gone here a few minutes over time looking at this here. Gosh, gone 10 minutes over time. Thank you for the extra time you're giving me here tonight. And uh, sorry about some of the little technical issues we've got here, but again, we're going to get gooder and gooder. Father God, I just thank you for each one now. I pray, Father God, a blessing upon each one. I thank you, Father God, for those that are partners to this ministry. And I thank you, Father God, as they're partnering with this ministry, their, their finances are blessed. And Father God, as they've given them to the soil, that this seed is blessed and is multiplied, Father God, and the kingdom of God is established and advanced. And Father God, over 100 million souls saved, discipled, and serving you. And Father God, as they've given of themselves to this ministry, Father God, I thank you that you give back to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Father God, I just declare blessings from the left, the right, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, from every direction, Father God, omnidirectional. The windows of heaven are up, and then you pour up blessings, Father God, because as they've chosen to sow in faith, I thank you, Father God, even as a word we had earlier to, tonight, Father God, even though others may be in famine, it's our time for a hundredfold return. Father God, I thank you for each one and their partnership with me and the opportunity, Father, you've given to me to speak into their life. And I just declare, Father God, this seed produces fruit in your kingdom and their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you again for this opportunity. And those of you that are in the Milwaukee area and Rockford area, we'll see you there Thursday and Friday this week. And uh, Sunday morning, Algonquin, Illinois. Sunday night, we'll be in uh, Monmouth, Illinois. And then appreciate your prayers and your support for our trip to Switzerland next week. And then off to Germany where a revival is brewing, just waiting for the Holy Ghost to, in us to take it to the next level. So appreciate your prayers and support of that trip as well. Well, praise God. I trust that was a blessing and encouragement to you. It blessed me just uh, hearing it again as I'm uh, putting the, the, the video together here for you. And uh, I just want to say again, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support of the ministry. And uh, together, we're going to see over 100 million souls saved, discipled, and serving God. And uh, if you would uh, consider being a partner to the ministry, we really appreciate that as we're stretching our, our tent pegs out more and more as we go across the face of the good earth to see the vision fulfilled. And also, we have now initiated a new partner program uh, for this year. And we encourage you to be part of that. And uh, part of that includes, uh, we have been working on for many years, developing uh, the Supernatural Discipleship Program. Somebody said, how long did it take you to do that? Well, 30 years, actually, more, more about 36 years when I got started. But literally, uh, since 2007, uh, we've been working on it, put uh, probably close to a half a million dollars into the development of it at this point. But uh, it is a life-changing course that usually goes six months, although most people stretch it over a year or more, but it has three different levels, level one, level two, and level three. And level one, uh, again, it's totally flexible, but it includes my, my daily devotionals, it includes the spiritual assessment tools, which are tremendous, it includes the scripture memory meditation, uh, which is tremendous, along with 100 key points, the intent of heart, and a daily journal. And uh, normally that's a $30 registration and $30 a month. But uh, for our partners, anybody that supports our ministry any way, shape, or form, whether it be a dollar or a thousand dollars a month, uh, you're a partner. But uh, you know, sign up to be a partner today, and uh, you'll get that level one as a blessing to us.
plus other partner perks. There's hundreds of videos or audios, I should say, more audios and videos in the partner section of our website. These uh, Tuesday night calls that we're doing here on the webinar now, we've been doing them for many years and everyone's recorded. Many of the series that are in my library are actually coming from these Tuesday night sessions, but as a partner you have access to all that as well. So thank you for your partnership. Also thank you for subscribing. And uh, every new video comes out then, you, you'll get noticed about it and get a notice about it. And uh, thank you again for your prayers and support. God bless.